Peter Francis, I mean, tell me how it felt last week when you saw the conclusion of what has been years of trying to get the truth out for you through various different means, and you finally see the Home Secretary announce there's going to be a public inquiry. Do you feel vindicated? Relief. Vindicated, I think, will come at the end of the public inquiry. I'm sure I'm going to be vindicated, but at this particular point in time, relief is the main word I would use, how I actually felt uh, last Thursday. What, that somebody has believed officially something you said? That it gives me the opportunity to be able to say in the open public everything that went on and then after I've given my evidence in the public inquiry I'm then hoping everybody will believe me. That, that's my hope. Have you had any assurances about whether you will be prosecuted or not if you give evidence in this public inquiry? No, I haven't, but I think in all fairness, it was only announced last Thursday, and I think they're looking at a lot of aspects, one which obviously will be that. I, I don't think the Home Secretary or anybody else would actually want me to appear in the public inquiry, then prosecute me. I, I, I don't think that for one minute. If the event I wasn't given any assurances, I'm actually beyond caring. The threats on the Prosecution of the Official Secrets Act started against me since April 2001 on Woods, beyond caring. I'll appear in the public inquiry whether or not I have it, but I would prefer, obviously, to appear that I wouldn't be prosecuted. Now, the, the key shocking finding, uh, in, in the Ellison report at least, is that there was this spy in the camp, an undercover police officer uh, looking at the Lawrences during the McPherson inquiry, uh, an, an officer who's been termed N81. Did you know that officer? Did you know who that was and what they were doing? 100%. I know who N81 was. Actually, if you read the full Ellison report, there is another SDS officer, N78, gets a little bit confusing with the number, who was also an undercover SDS officer, and he was deployed into also the Stephen Lawrence campaign support groups prior to me actually being deployed. I was deployed because originally N78 couldn't provide accurate intelligence on the Lawrences. Just sticking with N81 for a second, yep. I mean, do you know if that officer is still serving? No, I don't know. I last saw uh, N81 on the 27th of September 2007 when he came to my leaving do for leaving the SDS. I mentored him to go out into what we call the field. I gave him details of targets and his, the way he would conduct himself, so I was actually N81's mentor. And did you talk to him about this being a smear campaign? No. By then, the remit and what was expected to be done by the SDS had changed. I had confirmed to the SDS and the special branch that Lawrence's were law-abiding, caring people, normal members of society. So my intelligence actually said that these people were not a danger to us. So by the time N81 went out, he would have been purely in the public order remit. It stunned me, absolutely stunned me, almost as much as everyone else, that N81 was still deployed against the Lawrences at the time of first inquiry. I wasn't aware of that at all. The thing that is perplexing, though, is that both of these reports last week, Ellison and Creedon, uh, said that there was no evidence they could find that there was a smear campaign. We know that there was an officer deployed, but they haven't concluded that it was a smear campaign. What is your evidence that it was a smear campaign? I'd separate the two reports entirely. One, Mr Ellison's report, is a thorough and proper investigation of what happened. He has actually drawn attention that all my reporting, all my reporting, all my personal diaries, everything in the SDS, have been shredded or they've disappeared. The report by Hearn it's just a whitewash. I, I, I won't even give it a minute. There, there is nothing at all in there. What would normally this happen... This is the police report, the police report. conducted by a chief constable Ms. from Mr. another force, Ms. Creedon. Mr Creedon, with the help of many metropolitan police officers, have done what always happened if the police investigate themselves. He's re reduced a report that actually just 
totally maligns me and just says what I was doing was lying. Then what normally happens is it takes about five years, maybe 10 years, or in the case of, like, say, the Hillsborough, 20 years, for somebody to re-examine the same evidence the police looked at and actually come up with the conclusions that Mr Ellison has. Mr Ellison's report is actually a remarkable report. He, with Alison Morgan, those two only, have re produced this outstanding report. But they have both concluded that there is no evidence that this was a smear campaign against the Lawrences. So w what is your evidence that it was? My evidence is what I'm saying, and Mr Ellison's conclusion is that the right forum for me is to appear before a public inquiry and give my evidence and let them draw the conclusion that there is or wasn't a smear campaign. Because what does it say that no other police officer has come forward to corroborate what you have said about what was going on? I mean, does that say more about the police, or does it also tell us something about you? I think if you read the Ellison report very, very carefully, there is a mention by an officer, but it's poo-pooed along the lines of they couldn't prove, and he actually tries to go the line of confirming that he knew about my deployment where it was. With regards to other SDS officers, there's a lot of SDS officers, particularly senior management, who are very, very worried that if what I'm saying is actually proved in the public inquiry, which I actually feel very, very strongly will be proved in the public inquiry. But do you, do you feel very disappointed that other officers haven't come forward to say the same sorts of things that you have? Disappointed if I'd expected it. Or surprised? It. I mean... no, not in the slightest. Neither disappointment or expected. I expected exactly what's taken place. What a well, you expected a cover up, is what I you're expected saying. far worse. I expected to be far worse, harder smeared. But I have to ask you about your own credibility on this. I mean, in, in the, the findings, they also say we must also take into account the potential for Mr. Francis to have suffered some genuine distortion of events or of the motives behind events due to the adverse effect that his undercover deployment had upon him. And who's... You were distressed by this. I mean, could that affect the way you perceive history? I think what happens is, if you were to ask any experts on post-traumatic stress disorder, I don't think post-traumatic stress disorder means you distort any of your history. It means you're actually locked into a cycle where you actually remember and you suffer for what, what happened. I, the only thing I personally am, is extremely good. I was trained to be a professional liar. I myself suffered a mental crisis over the fact that I couldn't get out of role. The way I wanted to conduct myself and to get myself out of my own mental strife was to actually make a point of not lying anymore. So I am going forward with the truth because I know the consequences of lying and long-term lying. So no, not doing it anymore, not doing it for the police, not doing it for anybody. I just wish the public to know the truth. And with this public inquiry now announced, I'm very, very hopeful that I will be given the opportunity to say the full truth and let the public decide if I was lying or other people have been lying. Also, the public inquiry will allow the campaigners that I infiltrated actually to also to give evidence. Now, they will answer whether or not I was out there asking questions about the Lawrences. I was probing, asking questions about them. I was probing, asking questions about other Black Justice campaigns. So people know what I, what I did. The other two officers, N78, N81, they also must appear in public before this inquiry. They cannot be hidden. Do you think we will ever get to the truth? And do, do you think the public can have confidence in the police? I think the public the overall confidence the police should have confidence in the police. What we have here is undercover officers against political activists that's wrong. The overall police, I, I still have faith in the police service overall. There is an element that was in the special branch, particularly the special demonstration squad, that was out of control. I was part of that and I'm ashamed to say And will it, we ever get to the bottom of it? If these inquiries didn't, will a public inquiry? If a public inquiry demands that some of the officers, say for example N78 and N81 and the former chief inspector N86 appear in person, not covered, they will have to give their evidence knowing that their former targets, particularly the undercover two officers who were in the Lawrence and Associated campaigns, they will then know that if they say they were also not hunting for intelligence, their own targets can say, well, hold on a minute, 
well, why were you asking all these personal questions about the Lawrences? That is the truth. And the only way the truth will be is that the police forget this neither confirm or not deny nonsense. I have never, ever had any assurance that my identity would be forever protected. This is a made-up nonsense policy. We were under the impression, because we were a black op unit in the secret special branch, that because the Official Secrets Act, we would never be found out. That is not the same as having a total assurance our identity has never be revealed. If N81 and N78 are revealed to the public, they, are, they were not against terrorists, they were not against serious criminals, they were against political activists, the same people as me. I've not been threatened by a single activist since coming out. I've, I've had nothing. The only threats I've had is from that I might be prosecuted on the Official Secrets Act. They should be in the open, all the former managers should be in the open and accounted. Who authorised the shredding of all my reports? My personal diaries that had the actual police liaison officers, the details of the family visits stapled in there. The requests in my diary, can you find out information about the Lawrences? Where are these diaries? Where are all the reports that I wrote about them? Somebody has to answer these questions. Peter Francis, thank you very much indeed. Christian, pleasure.